When I was a student at UCLA, uh, the orangutan was considered the most enigmatic and the most mysterious of the great apes. People didn't even know whether uh, they were fruit eaters, whether they were leaf eaters. Uh, people didn't know whether they were social or antisocial or solitary. And I was very fortunate because I met Louis Leakey and I asked him to help me. I asked him to help me go to uh, Southeast Asia to study orangutans. This orangutan, this picture is taken in 1973, uh, the um, National Geographic is from 1975. Her name is Akmad. When this picture was taken, uh, she was a small juvenile on the verge of adolescence. That was 43 years ago, and Akmad is still with us today. And that tells you something about the longevity of orangutans, that orangutans in captivity have lived into their 60s, and I'm sure in the wild that an occasional female, note I say female, probably does live into her 70s. The males have a harder time of it, because male-male competition is one of the uh, ordering principles of uh, orangutan male life. Orangutans are great apes. Uh, they are not the cl most closely related to us. That privilege or that honor belongs to the African apes. Orangutans are found only in uh, Indonesia and Malaysia. Orangutan means person, orang, hutan of the forest. And one of the things that is very characteristic of them is the male's large size. Now we have two types of orangutans. They used to be considered one species. Now they're considered two species, the Sumatran and the Bornean. And the Bornean male, as the Sumatran adult male, is also a solitary fighter. But he has carried the solitariness to the nth degree. Once Adult males get cheek pads. Once they develop um, uh, the, the, sort of the bulk of their muscles, their uh, mus sort of a muscular body, uh, they are no longer tolerant of any other male in the vicinity. So even more so than gorillas, who will tolerate other males and who live with a group of females permanently, the adult male orangutan, basically each time he wants to mate, he has to fight, or he has to chase sub-adult males away. Over 80% of wild orangutans live on two Indonesian islands, and these two islands are, as I mentioned, Borneo and Sumatra, and so uh, this is Malaysia. So there are orangutans who live in Sabah, northern, north, north Borneo, and here in Sarawak, but most of them live in Kalimantan, which is the Indonesian part of uh, Borneo, and also in northern Sumatra. And then you have Brunei, and orangutans are very rarely seen there. They don't live there, they sometimes wander past. The problem that all the great apes are facing, not just orangutans, but also gorillas, bonobos, and chimpanzees, is deforestation. So if you look at this map, you can see where most of the deforestation is taking uh, place. Borneo, orangutans live, Sumatra, uh, here too as well, and then West Africa, where chimpanzees live, and the Congo here, where Democratic Republic Congo, where bonobos, chimpanzees live. And you can see that this problem, uh, the forest decreasing in size or in area every year, is global in terms of the equatorial zone. We find that there are certain biological attributes that increase vulnerability to extinction. And we can see, if you have small populations, orangutans, there's only 7,000 orangutans at the most in North Sumatra, and at the most about 50,000 orangutans scattered, distributed throughout the island of Borneo, which is the third largest island um, on this planet. So small population, they're island endemics. Endemic means they're found there and no place else. They have very large body size, like I said, up to 300 pounds for an adult male. Orangutan and maybe 100 pounds 
220 pounds for an adult female. They're diurnal, although, you know, they'll stay up and eat at night, but most of the time at night they're in their nests. They have huge home ranges. They show very slow life history traits. An adult male may not become fully adult in Sumatra until he is 30 years of age. Only at 30 years of age may he develop those cheek pads and the large body size that indicates a testosterone surge that pushes him into adulthood. In Borneo, it's more like 18 to 20 years. Um, okay, they're not carnivores. So that, that's the one attribute they don't have. And they also have complex social structures, even though those structures are mainly in their heads because they're primarily solitary or semi-solitary in the wild. So orangutan natural history suggests that they are susceptible to sudden changes in the environment. And what are we having now? We're having sudden changes in the natural environment uh, mitigated by global climate change, and deforestation that is the product of human activity. I work in Tanjung Puting National Park, and you can see it. I've been there 43 years now. We work at a place called Camp Leakey, and that's me, and an assistant, a diac assistant, and one of the orangutans. So Gundel's been in this little chicken cage, chicken wire, for two days. You know, he was in a, in a van that took him to Jakarta. He was loaded onto this plane, and this plane took him the next day to Borneo. Now we're taking him off the plane, and he's going on a boat on the Sukhornia River uh, to that long bridge that you saw. And he was taken to Camp Leakey, and he stayed overnight in this cage. And guess what happened the next morning? It took him exactly 30 seconds to bust out of this cage. <laughs> so what does that mean? That means he could have busted out in the plane, he could have busted out in the van, <laughs> but he chose not to, you know? So orangutans are smart. It was only once he got to the primary rainforest that he busted out. 30 seconds. Just ripped the wire, <laughs> he's gone. Orangutans have the closest relationship between uh, mothers and offspring of all uh, mammals. Their birth interval is the longest. Eight years, a female orangutan gives birth in Borneo, uh, about on average eight years, at least in our part of Borneo. Sub-adult males uh, leave their mother's home range and range wide, widely till they come to an area where there are few uh, adult males, because the adult males do not tolerate their presence very well. And then eventually they become adult males like this one. And what do we notice about this adult male? Lots of scars, lots of wounds. Because a male's de a destiny as a wild male orangutan adult is to fight other males for access to females. All the great apes are uh, threatened with extinction. It's not just orangutans. It's bonobos, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. And the threats to orangutans in Indonesia and Malaysia are poaching, illegal logging, mining, illegal mining, but the main one is palm oil plantations. If orangutans go extinct in this century, and we still have a few more years to go, and it might happen, it will be due to palm oil. In 2006, we had massive fires caused by El Nino, uh, and El Nino is a weather phenomenon that causes drought in Kalimantan, and rainfall in places like California, unseasonal rainfall. And so you can see that 15 to 20 percent of the national park was destroyed by the 2006 fires. And we, as an organization, I'm president of uh, Rungtan Foundation International, we fought the fires. We fought them for six weeks, and our assistants, our rangers, did not, you know, go home to their beds, they didn't get uh, baths or showers, they just fought the fires. And here we have a photograph of an adult male in East Borneo uh, surviving the Holocaust of one of these fires. And you can see he's very thin. You can see his, uh, his bones here, and you can see that his cheek pads have dropped. He still has this luxurious hair. 
Oh, that was from previously. And he's starving. I mean, he can't eat burned leaves or dried leaves. So he's surviving on the bark of, uh, of wild trees. And of course, when you have fires like this, there's no fruit. Well, there are no young leaves, at least after these fires. And many of these trees just uh, fall over and die. So what was once a thriving rainforest is now a desert. And of course, with all the ash that is made available by the fires, perfect for palm oil concessionaires to uh, move in and start planting the palm oil. We established an organization called OFI, um, Rogatan Foundation International, and uh, we have done a number of things in order to help protect orangutans. Uh, we helped establish Tanjung Puting as a national park. Uh, we helped protect it. Our rangers patrol it along with the uh, forestry department, Indonesian forestry department. Uh, I persuaded, this was one of the great achievements of my work, I persuaded the, uh, the Minister of Forestry to establish Lamanda Reserve. Uh, we also established a care center. We provide a successful education program. We hire about 200 locals. And one of the things that we did in the last two, three years is, um, and we were initially criticized for this, is we created, we persuaded, we lobbied the largest palm oil company in Indonesia, and also the largest pulp and paper company in Indonesia, to accept a zero tolerance policy on the killing, capturing, and harming of endangered species, especially orangutans. It took us 10 months to negotiate this. 10 months a very intense negotiations. They finally agreed, established that policy, and then for the last two years, we have been training their managers and their senior personnel in the um, application and the implementation of this uh, new zero tolerance policy. And that's one of the most important things that uh, we've done. And the reason it's so important is because it's the palm oil companies that literally kill orangutans. Not only do they destroy the forest, but they actually kill the remaining orangutans as agricultural pests. And for some of these palm oil companies, it's actually company policy to do so. We also established the orangutan care center in quarantine. Uh, this is a veterinary hospital and orangutan nursery. Um, we do about 30 operations a year on orangutans, and occasionally on humans, too. <laughs> the local surgeon said that our veterinary hospital is in some ways better, better equipped than the local hospital. The one thing that people can do, every single person in this audience can help save orangutans. It doesn't cost money, but you can help them. And how you can help them is by not using palm oil. That's the one thing. If people stopped using palm oil, those massive um, forest conversion machines that are palm oil companies uh, will be forced to stop because they're interested in profit and there is nothing more lucrative on this planet basically than palm oil.